Hey, welcome back. Uh, you made it to the end. Today is the last day. Uh, so I'm here with my campers again. Uh, better go ahead and uh, introduce them. Uh, so we've got Keegan, of course, uh, wearing his camper t-shirt, by the way. Mom and Bowen and McKinley. You guys ready to go today? Yeah! <laughs> All right, so what are we up to today? So today what we're making is a game called Dragon Crossing. Uh, so I think Dragon Crossing is uh, best to show you. Uh, I think that's how things work best. So with Dragon Crossing, what we're going to do is we're going to um, try to get our dragon across the street, right? So our dragon can kind of go up and down, uh, and he can try to get to the street, uh, get to the top. Ah, and if you touch a car, you lose, uh, but it just lets you play again. Now, you'll notice that whenever I did this play again, that everybody just kind of stopped. Oh, no, I'm in trouble. Yes. Oh, I got hit. So close. Um, you'll notice that everybody just kind of stops whenever there's a win or a loss happens. And one of the things we're going to be doing today, there was a win. Uh, one of the things we're going to be doing today is communicating between our different actors. So this like very coordinated, uh, hey, everybody stop at the same time. Um, oh, no, um, is something that we have to figure out in code how to do uh, and make happen. Um, also, I'll mention that your theme can be different from mine. So I've got a dragon crossing a road, but really it just has to be a hero uh, with enemies that move back and forth. Uh, and then a victory at the top. So if you wanted to do like planets or something crazy uh, with, with something different color at the top, you could totally uh, do different things. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if we can uh, get started today. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a new project. Uh, so I'm gonna say create new project. Hopefully we're pretty good on this step. Uh, every single time I go down to a uh, block coding project, but I'm really sure that they are the same. So today I'm gonna risk it. I'm just gonna go with blank project. Woo. Uh, and let's go ahead and get started uh, with drawing some things. So the first thing I'll do is that I don't actually need my actor, uh, my monster, so I'm going to delete him. Um, and we've got to draw a stage. Um, our stage has to have whatever we want in the middle. I'm going to draw like a road scene. Um, it has to have a victory color at the top. Uh, for your victory color, it's nice to go and have a, a pencil and paper handy so that you can write down what your victory color is. Um, and then we're also going to need to make... Um, four different like enemies. So let's go ahead and start off by drawing some. So click on the gear for the stage, uh, click on add backgrounds, and then like we've done so many times, we're gonna draw an image, and you kinda have to click on that twice. You have to click on the paintbrush and then the draw image. First thing I like to do is I like to make my uh, stage fit on my entire screen so I know I can see everything. Um, and I'm going to choose uh, to make like a green grass first. It's almost like I'm building a road. So first there's grass, uh, and then I'm going to put a road on top of it. Uh, so to make some green grass, uh, I'm going to pick a color, uh, a nice green here, and use my paintbrush tool, and I'm just going to fill it in all green. After that, I'm going to draw my road. Um, and again, you can draw something different if you want. Uh, you can draw at my pace. You can draw at your own pace. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to draw... Uh, a gray road as a rectangle. Uh, I'm going to pick one of these grays and I'm going to try to make it such that it takes up most of the space but leaves some space at the bottom to where my hero can kind of like start off not just getting killed right out of the gate, right? Um, so there's a nice big rectangle. Uh, also, if you draw it and it's not where you want it, remember that you can always kind of grab these handles uh, and if it goes really badly, the undo button is useful. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some white lines on my road. Uh, so if I wanted to draw some white lines, uh, I'm just going to draw it here and then move it. Uh, and you can draw it, you know, like slightly on the road, slightly off the road, doesn't really matter. Another trick to keep in mind is that before you drop it, uh, if you want to be like a pro drawler, uh, you can copy paste things. And copy paste, I think, saves a lot of time today uh, if you get good at copy paste. So I chose to hit Control C uh, and then Control V to kind of copy paste it. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a bunch of lines on my road. Uh, I'm going to have like a, a four lane highway is my goal. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw uh, a nice uh, yellow stripe somewhere in the middle. Um, and then after I um, haven't quite like pasted to my background, I can do that Control C, Control V. Uh, and that will help me, uh, you know, mass produce my road uh, in a much faster uh, system. So like a, a few control V's every now and then get your road made much quicker. 
So I'll try to get these guys organized. Uh, maybe I'll do one more on the uh, on the left. Um, you also uh, you'll probably fight with the uh, Tinker drawing tool. So I'm just trying to get better uh, at uh, drawing. Uh, it's definitely a useful skill. You'll notice that we've drawn in almost every game we've made. Uh, once you get all of the ones made for a single lane, here's an even better trick. Uh, you could use the selection tool, uh, and you can highlight an area. And even though it's already like pasted on the background, you can still control C, control V, uh, that whole thing. Uh, and then you can kind of like make a whole lane at a time. So I'm not worried about um, what speed you draw at. Um, just kind of get it to where it, it looks fun. And there's no functional things happening in this part of the game anyway. So to be honest, you could kind of do whatever you wanted. Um, if you're OCD like me, you can see I accidentally made a, a little white line there somehow. Uh, that was not the goal. Hold on, I gotta fix that. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of that guy. That was whenever I was copying, I kind of made that. All right, now let's go ahead and do the functional part of the screen, and that's the victory color at the top. So that's the only functional part of this, this game. I'm gonna choose to do a nice, uh, I don't know, distinct color. Uh, maybe I'll just go with a nice pink. Um, and I'm just gonna put my victory color uh, across the whole top. Um, I chose to do it with a rectangle, but you could draw it with a pencil, whatever you wanted. Now that victory color, we are gonna need that. Uh, so let's go ahead and figure out what color that is. Normally we have to eyedropper it to like select that color, but we've currently got it selected. So I'm just gonna click on the multicolor wheel here and then hex, and then I'm gonna write down that color. I actually used this color quite a bit, so I knew what this color was. Uh, it's FFOOD5. And I remember it because even though that's a, a zero, a zero, and a five, it kind of looks like the word foods to me. I don't know, with two Fs. So I actually have that one memorized, which is silly. Once you've got your stage drawn, you can go back and start adding some actors. Uh, you can add as many actors as you'd like. I'm going to choose to add four. Uh, and these are going to be your, uh, your villains, right? Um, I think that since it's kind of a car theme, it'd be nice if, uh, if I had a couple cars on here. Uh, maybe I'll put one of the um, yellow cars. Um, I think the city life has a lot of good cars in it. Uh, here's a, a neat little like orange race car. Um, it doesn't have to be cars though if you don't want. So for example, um, I think I had spaceships in my previous example. Uh, so whatever uh, you would like to do. Uh, but go through and pause the video. Uh, obviously, you probably had to pause it a couple times during the drawing phase initially. Uh, mine is kind of fighting with me here to make it smaller. Um, and then I'll pick my last sprite uh, for the top. Um, and feel free to do all cars, uh, but if you wanted to do something crazy, uh, I mean, you do, do whatever you want, right? Uh, so here's this whole sci-fi library. Uh, maybe I'll have a, a T-Rex at the top, right? don't want to get uh, eaten by a T-Rex. Um, once you've got uh, your enemies in there, you need to pick your hero. Uh, what I'm going to pick is my hero. Uh, I'm going to call my game Dragon Crossing. Uh, I'm going to pick a dragon. Uh, there's dragons up in the default area. Um, it's one of their kind of like built-in things. And dragons are crazy because dragons, um, when you edit them, when you click on this edit dragon, it's what's called a character. It's not even an image. It's like a character, right? Um, and so you can change whatever you want about your dragon. You can give it a, a blue body or you can give it, um, you know, multicolor body. Uh, you can add crazy things like, you know, hats or jewelry. I'll give mine a, a little necklace here. As you do more with uh, Tinker, uh, you'll um, have more and more things get unlocked. Um, and so that's kind of what you can do with your, your character builder. Then I'm going to hit save here. So now I've got a blue dragon. Now the blue dragon does come with some code. Uh, go ahead and hit the play button and just see what your code currently does. Uh, and what your code currently does, uh, which is kind of neat, is when you hold down your mouse button, your dragon flies there. That's kind of cool. That's not really that useful for us, uh, but it's something instead of nothing to start with. Cool, so I consider this kind of the setup work. Uh, you probably had to pause your video a lot with it, but hopefully a lot of these things uh, you could do without me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save my game. Uh, so I'm gonna call mine Dragon Crossing. You can call yours whatever you want. Um, no need to publish it yet, uh, but this is my connecting with code. Uh, day five, the final day. 
Um, and I'm just going to hit save for now. I'm not going to publish it yet. I'll publish it later. Uh, let's go ahead and glance at the code that the dragon had to start with uh, and see if there's any of that that we would like to keep. Um, so uh, the code in here, actually, uh, one of my campers just said that they deleted it. So what the heck, I'll just delete mine too. We'll just start fresh. Um, that way we don't have to think about what's there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start in on this. So first off, we want to bring over uh, an on start. So our dragon, uh, when the game starts, is going to do some stuff. Um, and then what we want this dragon to do is we want him to uh, do some things forever. Uh, so if we do some things forever, uh, what he's going to do forever is uh, the dragon's going to move uh, just depending on what direction he is. So we need to have some way to switch what direction we're going, uh, and we have to have some way to move. We're also going to plan ahead a little bit. So uh, you notice how there were times in my game where everybody stopped, right? Just like everybody stopped. So what we're going to do is every sprite in our game today, every actor, is going to have a variable called like is game moving um, and if the game is moving then they're going to do the moving so we're going to plan ahead uh, we're going to make this variable so go ahead and click on variables uh, and click on create variable now we want to make a, a global variable so it's going to be for all actors um, and maybe we'll just call it um, like moving so moving uh, could be like a one if people are moving or a zero if people stop moving. You can call that a more descriptive name if you want, but I think moving is a fine, a fine name. And what I'm going to do is inside my forever loop, instead of just always having a move, uh, I'm going to like check that variable first. So to check something, you heard me say the word check, uh, that's an if statement. So if statements are over in control. And so we're going to say, if some condition, then run this code. And the code we're going to run is going to be movement. Let's go ahead and do that condition first. So what we want to do is we want to check that variable moving. And if it's a 1, then we are moving. And if it's a 0, we're not moving. So to check if something is a 1 or a 0, uh, that's in operators. Uh, see if you can find the equals. Uh, it looks like it's the second one down in the <coughs> Boolean category here. And you'll notice that it's got that diamond shape. So that means that it's something that can go in uh, to a condition, right? And so we're going to check if moving is equal to 1. So that's what our two sides are going to be. So go to variables. See if you can find your moving variable. So if moving equals one, then uh, we're going to do some movement. Um, again, if I go too fast, feel free to uh, pause the video. Uh, just trying to uh, help people go at a pace they're comfortable. So we want to move. Uh, we could run our game right now, uh, but there's a good chance that nothing will happen because what's the value of moving right now? We never said it. Um, and I think things probably start off as zero or even worse, they start off as unset. So what we've got to do, if we want to even see anything, we're going to have to set moving to be one at the start. Um, and then later when we hit somebody or win, uh, we'll set it to zero. So let's go ahead and do some setup things just so we can even see our game working. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set moving to be one. And so what this does is this will make my game be moving by default. Um, and later, if I want to make it stop, I'll, I'll set it to zero, right? Uh, while we're doing setup work up here, let's go ahead and do one more thing that I forgot to do earlier. Uh, and that is I want the dragon to only turn left and right. I don't want him to, like, turn his body up. Um, and so that's a command. We'll go ahead and put it in together, then we'll talk about it. Uh, it's in motion. It's called set rotation style. And the rotation style that I want to use is left, right, rotation. And so what that does is that'll make sure his feet are always pointed down um, and he can turn left and right, but there won't ever be a time where like his feet go crazy, right? Now we could run it right now um, and our dragon would start moving. Um, 
and our dragon moved really fast uh, right off the screen. Um, I didn't mean for him to go that fast. Um, campers, any idea what did I forget to add uh, that'll slow it down some? You forgot to add a weight. Yeah, I forgot to add a weight. Uh, so I'm moving 10 pixels uh, infinitely fast. Uh, I was lucky I even saw my dragon. Um, so I need to add a delay, a weight. A delay is in the control area. It's near the bottom. It's about fourth up from the bottom. Uh, and you can drop it in here with your move 10 pixels. Now the delay that I like to use, I use this uh, in a lot of my games, it's 0 0.05, kind of a crazy number, uh, but it's 1 20th of a second. Um, it makes our game move at about 20 frames per second. Um, and I find that that's um, a, good, a good number uh, to kind of make things uh, work about right. Uh, so if I run it now, uh, it's better. Uh, it's still not great. Uh, what happens is my, my dragon kind of slowly glides off the screen. Um, well, that's interesting, uh, but isn't really what I was after. Um, so I want to do two things. One is when I get to the edge, I want to bounce back. So I'm going to add that. It's in motion. Uh, and it's if on edge bounce. You can put it wherever you want uh, in your code. I'm going to put it uh, right after the movement. And then also, I don't like how my dragon was kind of like just gliding, right? This is a character. It's got more advanced things than that. So I want my dragon to like look like it's walking or running or something like that. And so let's go into um, looks. Now, there's two ways you can do this. I'm going to show you the, the way that I like to do it. Um, and I like to um, say um, switch to costume um, run. Now, there's a couple different ways to do that. I think the, uh, the code that came in actually used an animation, um, and so they, they had like an animate run. I actually prefer this one, the switch to costume run, because it will stop instantly. Um, if you want to, someday you can play with both, uh, but this is the one that I want. So now uh, it should do uh, things better. Uh, it should have my dragon uh, animating, uh, kind of like a, a, a switching to costume run. Now you'll notice that run is a little different from costumes we've used in the past. Run is actually a, a list of costumes. So by calling switch to costume run, it actually does animate through different things. It doesn't just switch to one costume, uh, but that's kind of neat. You can also speed your dragon up a little bit. Uh, maybe like 15 or 20 would make for a, a more interesting uh, dragon speed. Yeah, I think 15, I don't know, it just kind of feels like it, it's running better. Cool. So my game is uh, making good progress. Uh, I've got my hero uh, running back and forth. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to make my hero uh, be able to change directions, right? So if I hit like up arrow, uh, I want the dragon to go up. Um, if I hit right right now, it would go right uh, or down or left. Cool, so let's go ahead and see if we can uh, add some things uh, to let our hero change direction. So what I'm looking for is events. Um, and I'm gonna start grabbing these different uh, arrow key presses. So inside events, I grabbed the third one down uh, and I said when up arrow pressed. So when an up arrow is pressed, I want my dragon to point up. So that's in motion. Um, and it's point in direction. I always got to find it, right? Uh, here we go. Point in direction. And I want it to be up. So I kind of click on the zero up here and hopefully it, it pops to zero. Now that's actually enough. I could test my game now. Uh, so if I run it now, uh, my dragon started by running to the right. Um, and if I hit the up arrow, uh, then it switches to, uh, to running up, which is good. So go ahead and uh, pause the video for a minute uh, and see if you can get in all four directions. Uh, I'm going to choose not to show you mine. Uh, I'm just going to let you do it. Uh, but pause the video and see if you can get in uh, up, down, left, and right. All right, so I got uh, the rest of mine added in. So uh, up, left, right, down. Uh, you can look at the numbers here, but even better is, you know, like you, you just click on it and then you, you see the value right there. 
Uh, and make sure that your uh, dragon moves around uh, or whatever your hero is. Uh, so when I hit left, goes left, up goes up, right goes right, down goes down. Um, and if you hit a wall, uh, you should bounce off of it. Now my campers in here, the first thing they did is they discovered that if you hold down a button, you can kind of sort of go into the wall a little bit. Uh, that's not really the goal, uh, but that's what uh, that's what my campers discovered. All right, so let's go ahead and um, save it real quick. So go and click on save. So we've done a lot of coding. We don't want to lose that. Uh, and let's actually start working on uh, our first of our enemies. So you can start with uh, anyone you want. Uh, I think I'm going to start with the, uh, the convertible here. And one thing that happens a lot in coding is if you click on the convertible right now, you can see that he has no code at all. We could totally write their code from scratch. That would be no problem. Uh, but one thing that you do a lot in coding is go back to your hero again, go back to the dragon. If you think about this thread right here, just this thread, not, not all the wins. If you think about just this thread, this is actually pretty similar uh, to what the, what the enemies are gonna do because they're gonna have to um, forever, if they're moving, move pixels and go back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, save ourselves some time. So I'm going to click on this little handle on the left of on start. And I'm going to take this block of code and I'm going to drop it onto one of these other sprites. So I'm going to drop it onto my blue convertible. Now when that, uh, when you let go, like when you drop it there, it stays in the dragon. So it's not like you, you, you cut it out. But if you go to the convertible now, uh, you can see that you've got a lot of code to start with, which is, which is cool. So there are some things that we don't want, right? There are some things that we're going to change, uh, but this saved us time, right? Um, and when you, uh, when you do a lot of software development, uh, people, people love to save time, right? So let's think about what's different in this. Well, the first thing that's different is um, each car is not responsible for this variable moving. So I actually don't really, it doesn't do anything bad, but I don't really need this command uh, for each car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the right handle, and the right handle selects just that one, uh, and I'm just going to pop that one out. Now you could set it over here, that'd be fine, but I just don't need it at all, so I'm just going to drag it over to the trash can. Likewise, you'll notice that uh, my car here has this switch to costume run. That was for the dragon, right? A car doesn't even have a run, so I want to pop that out as well. Um, and again, you could set it over here if you wanted, but I don't really need it, so I'm just going to throw it in the trash. And the neat thing is, is that just by copying that code um, and uh, <laughs> going here, uh, you can see that my uh, car is moving. Now, this car had some unexpected behavior. Uh, this car is moving the wrong direction. Well, that's something. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I was not expecting that. Um, so uh, since my car is moving the wrong direction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into their image uh, and point them to go that way, right? Uh, there's a couple different ways you could do it, but my car, my convertible uh, is going the wrong direction. I think I know how to do this. So if you have a vehicle that's going the wrong direction, uh, click on um, this little like dotted square, drag it over uh, your whole car, trying to make your car as centered as possible inside of it. Um, and then there's a button down here, I believe, which is supposed to uh, flip the direction of the car. Um, I'll click, click on it again. So you can flip uh, your car such that it's pointing to the right. That was, uh, that was a very unexpected feature. Whenever I practiced this game, uh, it didn't come up. Uh, so I flipped it to the right. All right, I think it's finally behaving properly now. Uh, so if I hit play, uh, my car is, is going the correct direction again. Super. All right, so a little, uh, little stumble there. Uh, so let's go write some more code in him. So um, he wants to go back and forth. Uh, that's all true. But the convertible also has a job. And his job is to check to see if he's touching the dragon. Now, the dragon could check to see if he's touching, like, the blue car and the yellow car and the orange car. He can check them all. But it's actually easier for the cars because they only have to check for one thing. They just have to check for the dragon. So what I want to do is I want to check for the dragon. To check for something is an if statement. So I go into control, uh, and I find an if statement. Um, and you can put this if statement in a couple different places. Um, I'm going to choose to put it right after the movement, right? 
So I move, um, and then I'm going to check, hey, am I hitting the dragon uh, right now? Uh, that if, um, check right here, this is a sensing type of thing. So let's go into sensing. And what we want to do is we want to, this is always kind of funny, we want to drag over if touching mouse pointer. Wait, why did I put in mouse pointer? Um, and it's because mouse pointer uh, is an argument to this function, and you can change it, uh, and you can find your hero. So for me, my hero is a dragon. Uh, so I'm going to say if touching dragon, then. So now this, this is the next question. My car is right here. He's not, he's not like the one who's in charge of this game, but he knows he's the one who has the smarts. I just touched the dragon. And so he needs to somehow tell everybody else, everybody, stop moving. Um, and the way you do that um, is you broadcast an event. So this is something new, right? So this is a brand new skill we're learning. Go up to events. And events are things that happen, like an event is the game starts or an actor clicked. Um, but you can also make your own events. Uh, so scroll down a little bit until like, you get into this events area and find the one that says broadcast and then has a little box next to it and drag it and put it inside here. And so what he's going to do is he's going to broadcast, which means tell everybody else that something happened. And he's going to broadcast a new event called hit. And so he's going to say hit. And so just everybody, everybody with ears to hear uh, can hear him say hit, right? Now, maybe he's the one that yells hit, but I'm going to put this code on everybody else, right? So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and do that really quick, just because it'd be fun. Take this code and give it to the yellow car. And then take this code and also give it to the orange car. And take this code and give it to the T-Rex. So now, uh, if you hit play, it's going to be like uh, crazy, which would be kind of fun. Uh, if you hit play now, everybody moves. Uh, they're all going the exact same speed right now. Um, your dragon is the only one that has the ability to steer. Uh, and what we're going to do is whenever you hit somebody, they're going to broadcast this message hit. So they're all broadcasting hit right now. So every time I hit one of these guys, they're screaming hit. Like if only I could hear them scream. Um, but nobody's like doing anything, right? So it's like somebody yells fire, uh, but nobody moves. So let's go ahead and do the other side of uh, that. Let's listen for somebody to say hit. Uh, so the person that's going to listen uh, for this hit is actually the dragon. So the dragon is going to listen. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of move this code out of the way a little bit. Is going to listen and say, when I receive. So when the dragon receives hit, he knows, hey, I've been hit. And the dragon's job is to tell everybody to stop moving, right? That's the nice thing about this variable. So everybody's got this variable moving that they're listening for. So I want to tell everybody to stop moving for a second. So I go to variables. I go to set. And if I set moving to zero, then everybody's going to stop. Let's just check to make sure that that works. So when I hit somebody, they yell hit. Um, and then when the dragon hears them yell hit, he says, everybody stop. So I run it now. I'm just going to run right into somebody. Um, and as soon as I hit them, everybody stops. Now, interestingly, the game is still running. Um, it's just that nobody's moving because moving has been set to zero. So it's a really neat way to communicate. So we've learned two ways to communicate. One is to broadcast an event, hit. Um, and then another is with global variables, right? So he, he tells everybody. Now, whenever he does get hit, uh, so whenever the dragon gets hit, he wants to tell everybody to freeze. Um, he wants to say some things, and then he's going to let the game carry on. So if he wants to say something, uh, that's in looks. Uh, and find the big scary save out block, the one that has the four two seconds on it. Uh, and the dragon is going to say, ouch! Um, and then he's going to say play again, question mark. All right, and you can check that uh, if you want to check it just by running into somebody. So now everybody will stop and it'll say, ouch, play again. 
Uh, it says that for two seconds. If you want to make it happen for three seconds, you can. And then what I want to do is I want to reset the game um, before I restart playing again, right? So to reset the game, what I want to do is I want to move my dragon back to a good starting spot. Um, now, the best way to find a good starting spot is just to kind of move your mouse to that spot. And personally, I like to just write the number down really quick. Uh, mine is negative uh, 560, negative uh, 279. I find that writing it down uh, just makes life easier than trying to memorize it. Um, and so now I'm going to go to motion. I'm going to say go to XY, and I'm going to type in that number. Uh, I think I'm going to type in 280 just because I always like nice round numbers instead of 279. Um, and you can keep testing things in small chunks, uh, but now it should say, uh, ouch, play again. And then it should move you back to the start. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Actually, I might prefer mine just a little lower. Maybe I'll do negative 300. I'm being very picky here. Um, sometimes whenever you're the game designer, you're picky, though. Um, so he says, ouch, play again. So it resets uh, the dragon to that spot. I also want to make sure, because I might have been going up when I died, um, I want to make sure that I'm pointing to the right. Because when I reset the game, I always want to start to the right because I've kind of got that safe zone at the bottom. So I want to find point in direction. Uh, here's the point in direction. I want to make sure it says 90 degrees, which is the default. So now, even if I'm going up at the moment I die, um, I'm going to be going to the right here. And then what I'm going to choose to do, this is optional, I'm going to choose to wait for one more second just so the person can kind of like get their bearings again. Uh, waiting for a second was in control uh, and delay is like fourth from the bottom. We use that one all the time. And then I'm going to restart the game. So to restart the game, I just got to go back into variables. I've got to find set moving and to restart the game i'm going to set it to one and everybody is going to um, hear that because their code if you go look at it it says if moving uh, then they're going to like come back to life right uh, so let's go ahead and try our game so now uh, i should be able to walk around oh no they're all coming for me uh, and if i hit somebody it says ouch play again and then it puts me back to the bottom. It waits for a second just to let the player kind of get their bearings. Uh, and then it plays again. Ah, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Ouch, play again. And then it takes you to the bottom. So to be honest, our game is uh, fully ready, except for we can't win, right? So if you get to the top, you can't win. Another thing that I'd like to change is I'd like to make my cars be different speeds, right? I think I'm going to implement win first, so I'm going to win first, and then I'm going to create a way for my cars to kind of like be at variable speeds. It kind of makes for like a, an interesting pattern if they all go at different speeds, whereas like right now it's pretty easy to win, right? I just kind of go straight up and at the top. All right, so let's go ahead and, um, and check for a win. So to check for a win, my dragon uh, has to check if they're touching that color at the top. So a check is an if statement. So go into an if statement. And we have to think about where do we want this if statement. Um, and where I want this if statement is I want it right after where the dragon moves. So the dragon moves, and then I want to check uh, if, I'm, if I've won the game, right? I always like to put it right after a move because that's the moment where I can know if it happens. And the thing I want to check for is I want to check, check if I'm touching a color. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and go to sensing. And this time we want touching color. By the way, this is a good time to reflect on things. Um, so sometimes you're touching another actor. Um, and in that case, you say um, touching mouse pointer, then you change it to that actor. And other times you want touching color. Um, and so you use this touching color. And with that, you have to go figure out what that color was uh, in your stage. Now, I planned ahead, um, and I wrote down my color uh, long ago. Uh, and my color is my favorite color, uh, which is uh, 
foods, but I've got to remember uh, it's not O's, it's actually zeros and a five, right? So my color uh, is that. Uh, I had written it down earlier. Again, if you're working in this box, make sure you get good at using the left and right arrow keys. So click in there once with your mouse and then never click again with your mouse. Um, and then use the left and right arrow keys and delete to kind of like work uh, in that text box. Um, so you'll know that it works when this color matches that color. So I think that I've got that set. Now uh, inside of here, we want something to happen. Uh, there's a bunch of ways you could implement this. Um, you could put code like this, uh, this code right here, right in there. That would be fine. You could make a function. That would be fine. Uh, but today we're learning about uh, broadcasting events and listening for events. So we're going to do something that's a little silly, but, but it's good for practice. We're going to make an event that we broadcast called win, and then we are going to listen for it. Now that is a little unnecessary. You could just call a function or something like that. But I want to practice with events today. So let's go and practice our uh, last event for today. So click on events. And whenever I'm touching that color, I'm going to broadcast uh, the event win. Now anybody could listen for win. That would be fine. Uh, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen for my own events, right? So I broadcast win uh, and then I'm going to listen for it over here. And the reason I wanted to do it this way is because win is actually pretty similar to hit. So to save time, because I uh, like to save time, I'm going to make a copy of this event. So I clicked it with the left handle. I hit control C and I hit control V. And um, now I'm going to change it. So this was my hit up here. And this is my win down here. So when I receive win, um, everybody stops moving, just like they did before, um, except for I'm going to say, you win. You win. I always think it's interesting when you make games how similar the code is to winning and losing, because you either win or you lose, but either way the game is over. It's just a matter of what you say to your player. Um, and in this case, uh, we're going to stop everybody moving, say you win. Uh, if you'd like, you could also ask them to play again. So you win, play again. Um, and then you're going to go back to the start. You're going to point in the correct direction. You're going to wait to let them get their bearings. And then you're going to start it up. So I think we just finished this game. So it's time to try it out. Oh, actually, there's one more thing I want to do. Um, I want my cars to go at all different speeds. Um, so I'm going to have like one car go at 20, uh, another car go at um, like 30. Uh, and you can decide what good speeds are. Uh, but I like for my cars to kind of go at all different speeds. So I just clicked on each car. So my yellow car, I made him go 20. My orange car, he's my slow boat. He's going to go at, uh, I'll make him go super slow at 10. My convertible is at 30, and then my T-Rex, my top one, I like for my top one to be the fastest, right? That he's kind of like the hardest challenge. All right, time to try it. I might have made it too hard, right? So they're all at different speeds, um, which makes your game more interesting because now their patterns are gonna like get different. So you, they don't all go together, right? Uh, so I'm gonna try to, get, uh, try to get there. I think here's a good avenue uh, to get to the top. Yeah, you win, play again. Cool. So it looks like mine is working. Ah, darn. <laughs> uh, so the idea of these games is that you get an opportunity to uh, code and make a game, uh, but it's also a fun way to play your own game. Uh, and make sure you have like, uh, you know, brothers and sisters go try your game and things like that. Uh, and this one I think is, uh, is fully running. Hey, I'm going to give my campers just a minute to finish their game, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, save and publish on mine. Publish to community. Save and publish. Uh, that way other people can see my game. Uh, people can see what I've been doing. I'm going to come around and show my other campers uh, and their games. Hey, but I'm going to mention um, the extra project today if you want. The extra project is a separate video. I'm just going to kind of mention what it is. Um, it's to try to practice with functions, um, and it's to try to make a US flag. 
So I'm just showing this. Uh, there's a whole other video for it. It's an extra thing that you can do uh, that uses functions. So that is uh, another video that you could watch if you wanted. All right, so I'm going to go around and see how uh, my campers did on this. All right, Keegan, are you ready to go? Yep. <laughs> All right, so Keegan has what appears to be a goblin instead of a dragon at the bottom, which is great. Uh, and he has, oh, he's done something interesting. He has multiple, um, that's clever, Keegan. Uh, he has multiple villains in each row. So there could be just one villain. <laughs> His game is quite difficult, which is great. Keegan, one thing you could do to make your game more fun is make your goblin move faster. So see how you can change your code to do that. All right, Bowen, did you make a game today? Oh, Bowen just won his game. All right, Bowen, let's take a look to see what you've got. Bowen's favorite color is green, so I kind of thought he'd stick with a green dragon. Uh, and Bowen's got some cars in here. Oh, he's got a motorcycle in his. Great job, Bowen. And so, Bowen, I saw that uh, you can uh, lose games. All right, Bowen, you're on camera. See if you can win a game. Are you ready? All right, so he's thinking about it. He's going for it. Watch out for the motorcycle! <laughs> hey, Bowen. Which one's the fastest? Which one's the fastest? That one. It, that's good. Yeah, the top is super good. Did you have fun building it today, mm -hmm. Bowen? All right, McKinley. Let's look at your game today. Oh, you've got a different, you didn't use the road theme. You used a different uh, backdrop. That was very clever. Lava. Oh, and you've got lava. Cool. So you've got different <laughs> lava fields. You got destroyed. Play again. Oh, and I like your text box, sissy. And you chose to go with kind of a red dragon, which is fun. Red and orange. Red and orange. Oh, and your <laughs> top. quite hard. Your top row is quite hard. All right, so that's it. That's it for coding camp. You guys finished the last assignment. Did you guys have fun at coding camp? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure glad that you liked it. I had fun too. All right, and I'll go ahead and say uh, goodbye to everybody. Uh, we uh, really appreciate you uh, joining us. Uh, if you'd like to uh, get a t-shirt, they're still on sale for a, a couple more days. I think t-shirts help remind you of coding and things like that. Uh, but we really loved having you. Uh, and we'll see you some other time. Bye.